was that? What was that? Were you touching me? All right. So say it. Repeat after me. Okay. Ghetto party. Get up at it. Oh boy. All right. Ghetto. 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 Party. 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 You say ghetto party. Ghetto party. Ghetto party. Ghetto party. Ghetto party. What's that mean? Party. Ghetto party. Yeah, it's, it's party, but it's party. 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 It's like Harry. Ha- Harry Potter. Yeah, Potter. I know. When I grew up, we called him Harry Potter. Thank you. <laughs> Today we um, we thought it would be important for us to discuss about mental health. As you all know, we're going through a pandemic. Literally, it's not just one pandemic. We have a racial pandemic. We have mm. the COVID. Yeah. People are going through so much. There's hunger because of the economies. Like everyone in the world, people are dying, and. And, and it's just a lot. It takes a toll on so many people. Right. Um, and we just been figuring out how can we, you know, bring awareness about mental illness. Um, and, and, you know, how, how can we do that? Like, we're just doing our best to, you know, bring awareness about it. How, how do you think it's, you know, we can bring it about? Yeah. Um, bring about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we need to delve deeper into what mental health actually is Mm -hmm. because it's still kind of stigmatized in a lot of communities and we've spoken about this on the podcast um but just not being afraid to have uh those conversations just to really kind of break down Mm -hmm. what mental health is because like we've talked about it's not a tangible thing it's not something that you can see and you know it kind of affects you know people different ways mm. um particularly now and they have different stages too yeah and they have different stages so it's it's very complex so just being um able to hold space for that conversation yeah. and to really again break down what you know being healthy in a mental way is i yeah. think that's the first step I, and i believe like most of the adults we have now in the world they've been through some you know mental not even mental anxiety, because anxiety is a part of mental illness too. Because when you have anxiety and you have a lot of trauma, mm-hmm. you um, you don't know how to deal with the rest of the world, and yeah. then you start creating dialogues in your head. Um, yeah. So it's you know it's I think most of us have been through there, have been through um, you know trauma and anxiety and all these things, and they're all forms of um, mental health right. uh, problems. Yeah. Um, so for you, you know, I'm not, I, I didn't grow up here, so and now we're going through a lot of, you know, a movement, a huge movement. Yeah. Um, there will probably there. Some people say it's almost like what, how it wasn't in the '60s. But you know, mm-hmm. and I just saw this tweet yeah. yesterday. Mm-hmm. I think it was from my guy LeBron. <laughs> But he had said, or maybe not, it was, it was in a tweet, he just said it, but he said that it isn't a movement. It's, mm. not, it's not like a fad, it's not a passing thing. No. Because for us, for black people, yeah. particularly in America, it's yes. a lifestyle, because it doesn't just go away. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, like, this is our day-to-day life. So it is a lifestyle, True. and it's something that, um, you know, it's a, it's a conscious, continuous effort to bring awareness and to create change. It's, I just wanted to say that. That's that thank you. Correct. Thank you. That, and that makes yeah. mo- that makes a lot of sense because, uh, yeah, because, because I'm aware that there are s- certain states or certain yeah. cities that are, have to be extra careful. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm from Rwanda, and I guess coming here, I didn't know there was... The, I did not know the gravity, the... the, the Intensity of racial problems yeah. in America. I yeah. thought it was a history, literally, because of what we watch in the movies. Right. It makes it seem as if we're in a post-racial society. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. It's not the case. But I remember. Okay, this is a funny story. I remember the first, um, the first, my first week here in America, 2014. Mm-hmm. I was at a party in Beverly Hills. Hello. <laughs> 
Um, and this party, I just, this is a brand new girl from Africa, okay? Yeah. From Rwanda and some people, when I tell them Rwanda, I never heard of it. I was like, oh, you're from Wakanda? Wakanda does not exist. I wish it did. <laughs> but I remember um, in this, at this party, it was like almost 100 people. Um, and talking to people, I didn't, I didn't think much about, I, but about how that I'm black and mm -hmm. everyone is white. I didn't yeah. think about it because it's not, I grew up with a different kind of hatred, you know, right. with ethnics and tribes and yeah. religion, but, but the, the, the white, black and white and who's white enough, who's black enough, whatever, all those things, we, it was a different form of, of divisionism and yeah. hatred. Right. Um, so I remember seeing a black person walking in that party and when I saw that person, I realized I was the only black person in the room before that guy walked in. Mm -hmm. And the naive me who did not know how intense racial problems are here, yeah. I said it yeah. out loud and I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was the only black person in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very awkward, right? Oh, they everyone Super everyone said you know you know like back disappearing in, yeah yeah they disappearing wanna, they didn't want to be a part of that discomfort yeah and yeah. and everyone got so dis uncomfortable and I, I didn't know why I was mm -hmm. like why did I say that made everybody <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it's right. normal and yeah. and then uh, my boss uh, who's from England he's he's mixed of uh, Indian and white. But he grew, he knows a lot. He he was going back and forth in Rwanda, so he understood in America. He understood, you know, it, different cultures in yeah. these countries. Yeah. He explained it to me, and he said, "You see the tension in mm -hmm. Rwanda between ethnics. It's the same way here in America, right. but but right. it's with color, skin tones. Skin tone. Right. Yeah. So I, that's when I started, you know, all the racial stuff Your eyes sinking were opened, in. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, a little bit." Yeah, a bit. it's um, yeah, it's a curious. It's thing. a journey, so I, I can understand for you, mm -hmm. growing up, you were constantly reminded. I was, yeah. Yeah. How yeah. how was how was it for you, growing up? Yeah, it was confusing. Mm -hmm. Um, it was very confusing, just because, I mean, it's it's not just divisionism, um, with uh, white or black people or whatever uh, ethnic background it's like it's within communities as well because to give you an example so growing up chris and i my brother yes we were um very privileged um i mean we were we were taken care of um we were spoiled our family mm -hmm. was able to provide my parents were able to prov provide mm -hmm. um like the basic necessities and far beyond that i didn't grow up with a lot of um like issues that a lot of my other black friends had you know mm, yeah. so it was hard for me to sort of relate in a, in a few ways yeah because Your i parents protected you guys yeah we were very protected and we grew up in a in a very safe uh, suburban area um and they protected us uh, to, to the best of their ability yeah was. to protect from from what they experienced because my mm -hmm. parents went through it you know, yeah. um, and rightly so, they didn't want their kids to experience mm -hmm. a, a fraction of the hardships that they had to they had to endure. So, um, yeah, no, it, it just lent itself to a lot of uh, confusion about my identity and like kind of where I fit in amongst my peers, but also amongst my black friends. Yeah, because you know, if for example, because I, 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 I love listening to your stories and everyone is your stories because yeah. um, just you've been um, with your parents, they raised you, give you everything, and then you go outside there where they're not with you, you know, they're not going to be able to protect you. There's just like a lot outside world that is going to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Lending on you and there's not that shelter. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's not like I was naive to yeah. a lot of the issues. I mean, mm -hmm. they protected me from having to experience some things at an early age, but, but I was aware. not like, yeah, I was not ignorant to the fact that at any point I could be 
racially profiled or、mm. someone could、uh, treat me a certain way based on how I look or how I talk or whatever.、Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I was very educated、um, on the reality of、uh, my existence.、Mm. You know? I, like, I know your dad. Oh,、He's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he probably he, he made sure of it. <laughs> he definitely, I mean, he, he wouldn't have let us, my brother and I,、uh, leave the house, you know? Wow, yeah. Without. Not like on a day to day basis,、yeah. but like when we move out, he would not let us go out on our own as adults without having the like prerequisite knowledge of what to expect as, what, a, as、yeah. a black man yeah. Yeah. in this country. Yeah.、Um, talking about mental health,、mm-hmm. I think it really helps sometimes to share personal stories, and that's why we did this,、um, this discussion today because、yeah. we feel like. Our personal stories, when we share them, we realize there's someone somewhere out there who's going through the same. And sometime with, sometimes when we share it, we have that hope that if they're going through the same thing we went through,、mm-hmm. it will give them courage,、yes. you know, and hope、yeah. that they're gonna overcome it. And, and there's more、uh, to life than our circumstances,、uh, than our、mm-hmm. hardship. Was there a moment when growing up that You, I know we talk about a lot about identity、uh, here in America, like as a young black boy.、Um, did you、um, experience you know, identity crisis?、Um, do you remember any moment that probably you know, brought up a lot of, you know? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I have a couple of things that immediately come to mind.、Um, one thing that my brother and I, we've spoken about it,、mm-hmm. but there's this thing. There's, there's a phrase that white people and black people want to throw to black people、mm-hmm. who don't meet the certain very specific criteria、mm-hmm. of how they view or think black people should act and think and you know, behave, right?、Mm-hmm. So they would call us Oreos. The, like, you know, the、oh, black, black on the outside, white、right、on the heard, inside.、Yeah. And it's not necessarily, it's a. It's, it's an incredibly ignorant yeah, term. It is. And at first, it, it didn't get to me. That's just kids. I, what I thought was kids just calling people names. But it's very, very racially charged. And there's like some damaging、uh, racial、mm-hmm. undertones to that. Yeah, and、okay. also, it's very limiting on someone's identity.、Mm-hmm. So, being called that throughout my childhood because I didn't grow up listening to rap, like、mm-hmm. my parents. Rap music, that was, that was kind of the thing that, that united a lot of. That should not be the identification of, of rap music. No, it should not.、Yeah. I mean, I, I, I appreciate rap now, but、yeah. like, that was the thing when we were kids. It's like rap in sports.、Yeah. And if you didn't like, either participate or, or like one of those two things, then you were seen as different. You, were seen you as played like, sport, though. I did play sports, yeah. right?、Um, did that help? It、okay. did. It, it helped to integrate, because、yeah. I, I genuinely. Uh, loved it and still love it to,、yeah. you know, to this day, but、um, it didn't leave a lot of room for、mm-hmm. individual, individualization. Is that a word? Indi- yeah, individualism individual. or individual. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it didn't, it didn't lend itself to make me、um, feel comfortable、uh, expressing myself in whatever and way. And finding yourself. And finding myself, right? Yeah, because、yeah, I'm, I'm a teenager, I'm an adolescent, so I'm actively trying to figure、yeah. out who I am. And,、mm-hmm. That and the next.、Um, so, yeah, I mean, segueing into sports, that's the other thing that I wanted that, that came to my mind was、um, playing basketball. So, I was, I was 15 years old and、um, I had a teammate whose dad was the coach of that team.、Mm-hmm. And it was a summer league game. And, like, summer mid, mid game,、uh, I think we had either scored or made a good play. The other team called timeout. My team was super hyped up. They were, you know, they were happy. They were like, yeah, 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 yeah. As one sports team does、yeah. when something good happens. Yeah. So、um, my coach, white guy, he looks at me and sees that I'm not as animated or hype as, as he expected me to be or、mm-hmm. wanted me to be. And then he says, Alex, you gotta black it up, you know, black it up. And then, like, for me, I, I shut down immediately. Because he said it in front of the other teammates,、mm. white teammates, black teammates. And it, it went straight back to like, he essentially called me an Oreo. 
Yeah, right? Yeah, in, in just He's a different, like, yeah. In a different way. Now, he different I'm sure way. he didn't mean anything didn't by mean, it. Yeah. But, but it's an what... He's an know? educator. He's a grown man. He should know better. Right. But, I mean, in that moment, that was just another moment where I'm like, what, 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 what do I have to do? Do I have to, like, be someone who I don't feel comfortable being? Mm. Because, because, okay, so I love, I love eclectic things. Yeah, I've always I loved, know. like kind of strange that I'm not necessarily strange but not very popular things like yeah. I love anime yeah. I love my, my Japanese anime <laughs> right I love um, I all know the sometimes when of, I take off my braids and my hair is like this you're like oh yeah you look at a certain anime and I have like no Goku, idea like Dragon Ball Z characters <laughs> we'll probably share a picture of me looking like yeah, that well, maybe if I allow yeah um, 